So we don't catch a lot of fish, and when we do, we like to enjoy them. So we caught two different species of fish yesterday. Arrow caught this beautiful rainbow trout, and I caught this small Chinook salmon. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna prepare these fish exactly the same. We're gonna do some butter, some lemon, onion, garlic, and parsley, and then we're gonna throw them in the wood stove wrapped in some foil, and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison and kind of figure out which one tastes better to us. But first, we're gonna get some garlic bread ready and also cook this in the wood stove. So this is just a loaf we baked this morning and we're going to do some really easy garlic bread. The way we like to do this, if we're cooking it in a fire or on the wood stove, is you take any kind of loaf and you just want to make some cuts in it. Not all the way through to the bottom because you want it to just kind of stay together. And then we're going to stuff this thing. We have garlic and parsley here. Then we have some butter we're also going to put in there. And then we do a little bit of seasoning on top. We're gonna to do cayenne, salt, and pepper. Let's put a little bit of olive oil on it. And the last thing you wanna do is kinda of get it all covered in this foil. And that thing's ready to get tossed in the fire. All right, now let's get these fish ready to go. We're gonna do lemon. And we've got some onion. We've got butter. And now I'm going to get some parsley chopped up. These are really easy to do and it's a great way to cook them if you're out camping. That's where we usually would use this recipe. So we're going to take our lemon and you're basically just going to stuff these fish. Here's our butter. Here's our parsley. All right, next we're gonna get these put over onto our foil. And we're gonna add a little bit more butter, some more of the onion, squeeze a little bit of lemon, some salt, and some pepper. Okay, this is the trout. Let's get it rolled up. Okay, and like we said, we're just gonna do these exactly the same. Okay, so we can tell that the trout's gonna be the big one, the little salmon will be the small one, and those are gonna take about 15 minutes to cook in the wood stove. So, to kill some time, we figured we'd go over some stuff on our solar system. We're about a week away from the first day of spring, so we pretty much made it through our first winter in Alaska, and we're just gonna kinda of go over a few things on the solar system and what we thought of it. Okay, I got all the coals pushed towards the back of the fire, and we're just going to set everything right in here. So I got the bread. And I got the two fish. Okay, so let's head outside. Alright, we're out here at the panels. And I think only one concern we had with our panels was the high winds we get here. This system, you can see, is kind of... It's not fully rigid. It kind of it kind of moves a little bit. We've had some really really strong winds in our opinion this winter, and this thing has done great. We haven't had to tighten it, move it, adjust it at all. So no complaints there. It even made it through our big earthquake, and we didn't realize it when we were mounting these up on our Connex that it was going to be so much better putting them up, you know, 10 feet off the ground. It gets that much more sun. So these panels are 295 watts each and they're made by Canadian Solar. When we were first pricing our system, we weren't sure how many panels we were gonna need, if we we're gonna need two or four or six, but just these two has been working out great for us. So sometime in the spring, we are gonna adjust this angle up a little more as the sun gets more overhead. But for now, we're gonna leave it just where it's at. Okay, the next part of our system is where we house our batteries. These batteries have been outside this whole winter and we've had absolutely no issues. Let me pull this cover off and show you the inside. So here's our battery setup. We have four Trojan 
batteries and these are six volt deep cycle flooded batteries so they do take water so we've had these batteries hooked up to our system for seven months now and you do have to check the water level on these batteries we check them about once a month and i was actually kind of surprised i haven't had to add any water to them so going into winter one thing we were kind of worried about was having these batteries freeze up on us so we've done two things to keep that from happening the first thing we did was we insulated our box and the next thing that we did throughout the whole winter was we didn't run these batteries really low. We tried to keep them charged and we always had them charged above 70%. And we had temperatures as low as negative 25 this winter and these batteries have done absolutely perfect. In the cold weather, we did notice that these batteries took a little longer to charge and the charge didn't last as long. Now that it's warming up, it seems like these things are charging really quick, whether it's from the sun or the generator, and the charge is lasting a lot longer. So in the dead of winter, when we really weren't getting any sun, I just hook up the generator to this for about an hour, and that would seem to keep these topped off. And we were actually pretty surprised. We obviously are new to Alaska, but we got a lot of really, really sunny days that kept the solar system charged without having to use the generator. And there was one stretch of three weeks where we didn't have to run the generator one time. All right, so all in all, this box was really cheap for us to build and it ended up working great. So let's talk about what we're actually running on this, this small solar system. Some of the main things right now are our chest freezer, which is, I believe, an eight cubic foot. We charge laptop, phones, cameras, our drone, and we also have just lights and a 12 volt pump for our water. Now the things that are drawing the most energy from this system are going to be our laptop, our chest freezer, and occasionally we do bring our shop vac in here and that draws quite a bit of energy from it. So with the days getting longer and us getting more sunlight, uh, it kind of works to our benefit because we seem to be up more and using more energy and we're getting more energy brought in. In the winter, we didn't have to have the freezer running because it was so cold outside, we just freeze stuff out there. But now that it's warming up, we have that running but we do get more sunlight. So it's not an issue and we have plenty of power. And for our gardening season, we have two seed mats going and we're getting chicks in a couple weeks and we're gonna have to run heat lamp for them. So it's a pretty cloudy day today. The sun's not even breaking through and we're pulling in right now 134 watts and our battery is at 12.8. So we're almost full. This thing, when it's sunny out, will be fully charged by about 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's awesome. And when we're getting full that fast, we make sure to have everything in, charging everything in that we need to run so we're not wasting any of that energy. All in all, the system has worked out really good for us. If you're kind of in the same boat we are energy-wise and you might be looking at getting a solar system, this whole setup ran us about $3,000 and we did end up getting a tax break on it which gave us $1,000 back. So all said and done, we're into this system, $2,000. So we really find it interesting to know exactly how much energy we're using. And it's actually kind of fun to use this system and see how it works. I don't really mind going out to get the generator if I have to plug in something big like a skill saw or something like that. But these systems, I mean, it's not like you're hooked to the grid and you're just getting electricity and you can use it as much as you want, whenever you want. You do have to monitor if your batteries are getting low, you have to monitor the water levels, things like that. But that being said, we have peace of mind not having to pay an electricity bill every month. And when the power goes out, we'll still have it. So it's been about 15 minutes. Let's check on those fish. Okay, the fish, the bread, they're done. They look great. Ariel, come on in here. We're going to taste test these. I'm going to start with the bread first. Let's call them a name. Okay, I think we both agree that the bread was great. No complaints there. We're going to try the trout first. Tastes really good. Tastes like if you're out camping and you catch a trout. Delicious. Does it have a, a little pinker meat? Yeah, meats. The meat may be a little pinker on this trout than what we're used to seeing. Just tastes really fresh. No, not fishy at all. You can taste a little bit of the lemon. Okay, let's try this salmon. These are the stocked Chinook salmon. Speaking for myself, I haven't eaten a lot of salmon, 
with my day. The trout tastes like trout. I don't know if the salmon tastes like salmon, but it's really good. I prefer the salmon. Yeah, you get the same flavors out of them. You get the lemon and the and the onion and everything like that. Um, this one, it's got a completely different taste. It does. It's it's almost more meatier, less flaky. I think it's like drier, a little drier, not as tender yes. of meat. This is moister. Yeah. It doesn't have like not as much flavor as the trout. Yeah, I can't really. If I had to pick one, I'd pick the trout. I like it just a little bit better. They're both really good. So I chose the salmon and Eric chose the trout. Yeah, that's our taste test. Honestly, they're both great. And if we catch any of these again, I'm pretty sure we're going to keep them and eat them. So we're going to go ahead and finish this fish and the garlic bread. And we'll see you guys next time.